Let's take a minute to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. You've probably heard this phrase a lot, especially if you've spent any time in church. But here's the thing. Have you ever really thought about what it means? Like, beyond just a nice idea or a Sunday school lesson? Because the fruit of the Spirit isn't just a feel-good phrase. It's a real, practical way to live the life God has planned for you. It's not about being perfect or religious. It's about letting God shape who you are every single day in a way that brings real change, not just in your life, but in the lives of the people around you. Sounds powerful, right? Let's break it down together and see how this can transform the way you live. So, what are these fruits? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, Paul writes about the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. That's a lot, right? Let's break down what each of these fruits means in our everyday lives and how we can live guided by the Holy Spirit. First off, love. Love is the foundation of everything. In fact, Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love God and love others as ourselves. It's pretty clear, right? But here's the catch. This love that God calls us to isn't just about feelings or warm fuzzies. It's not about loving people when it's convenient or when they deserve it. It's a daily intentional decision. This love is about choosing to be compassionate, to be kind, to forgive, and to serve others, even when it's hard, even when it's uncomfortable, and even when we don't get anything back. Imagine what our relationships would look like if we loved like that. It changes the way we see people because we start seeing them the way God sees them. We stop being critical, impatient, or quick to anger Instead, we're more gracious and understanding. That's what happens when the Holy Spirit fills us with this kind of love. It transforms our hearts and our relationships. Next, we have joy. Now, let's clear something up. Joy isn't the same as happiness. Happiness is great, but it's based on circumstances. When things are going well, we're happy. But joy, that's something deeper. Joy is something the Holy Spirit gives us, no matter what's going on around us. It's the peace and contentment that comes from knowing that God's in control. It's like having an anchor in the middle of a storm. The world might be falling apart around you, but there's this unshakable joy because you know God has a plan. And that plan is good. You can go through hard times without losing your joy because your joy isn't tied to what's happening in your life it's tied to God. That kind of joy changes how we handle challenges. Instead of being overwhelmed, we face them with a different attitude because we know the source of our joy is unchanging. Speaking of peace, let's talk about that next. Peace is something we all crave, especially in today's world, where everything feels chaotic. But here's the good news. God's peace isn't just about being free from conflict. It's about having an inner calm that comes from trusting Him completely. It's knowing that no matter what happens, God is in control. It's being able to take a deep breath, even when life feels overwhelming, because you trust that God's got it. There's a verse in Philippians that says, God's peace surpasses all understanding. It means that even when things don't make sense, even when you're in a storm, you can have peace. That kind of peace is a gift from the Holy Spirit, and it's available to all of us if we let Him guide our hearts and minds. Now, patience. This one's tough, right? Especially in a world where everything is instant. We want quick solutions, fast answers, and when we don't get them, frustration builds up. But the Holy Spirit gives us patience. This isn't just about waiting in line without getting annoyed. Although, hey, that's a good start. It's deeper than that. Patience is about trusting God's timing. 
It's about waiting with a heart full of faith, believing that God is working behind the scenes, even when we can't see it. Patience isn't passive. It's actively trusting that God's timing is perfect, even when it doesn't align with ours. Moving on, let's pair kindness and goodness together. These two go hand in hand. Kindness is being considerate, gentle, and generous toward others. It's being thoughtful and looking out for ways to help or bless someone else. But goodness takes it a step further. It's about living in a way that reflects the character of God. It's doing the right thing, even when no one is watching, even when it's hard. When the Holy Spirit is working in our lives, we begin to treat people with more compassion. We become more aware of how our words and actions affect others. We start living in a way that honors God, and that's the beauty of goodness. Let's talk about faithfulness next. This is all about trusting in God, even when you don't have all the answers. Sometimes life doesn't go the way we expect. Sometimes our prayers seem unanswered, and it's easy to doubt. But faithfulness is holding on to God even when things don't make sense. It's believing that God is who He says He is, and He will do what He promised. There's a verse in Hebrews that says faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The Holy Spirit strengthens our faith so that we can stand firm, even when everything around us feels shaky. Then we have gentleness. This one is often misunderstood. People sometimes think gentleness means being weak, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Gentleness is strength under control. It's about being humble, about not reacting with anger or aggression, but with grace and calm. Jesus is the perfect example of gentleness. He had all the power in the world, yet he chose to serve others humbly and lovingly. The Holy Spirit helps us live with that kind of gentleness where we're not controlled by our emotions or circumstances, but by God's love. Finally, we come to self-control. This is huge. Without self-control, it's hard to live according to God's will. Self-control helps us say no to the things that pull us away from God. It helps us stay focused on what really matters. Self-control isn't about being perfect, but it's about making daily decisions that align our lives with God's purposes. The Holy Spirit empowers us to have control over our desires, our words, and our actions, helping us live in a way that honors God. Here's the thing. Living a life guided by the Holy Spirit isn't something that happens overnight. It's a journey, and sometimes we're going to mess up. But the good news is that we don't have to do it on our own. The Holy Spirit is there, guiding us, helping us grow in each of these areas. When we let the Holy Spirit work in us, these fruits will start to blossom in our lives. We'll find ourselves becoming more loving, more patient, more peaceful. And the best part? These changes won't just affect us. They'll impact everyone around us. So, the next time you feel like you're struggling with patience, peace, or self-control, remember that you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is actively working in you, even if you don't see it right away. Just keep seeking God. Keep asking Him to fill you with His Spirit, and watch how these fruits begin to grow in your life. Before you go, I want to encourage you to watch the next video where we'll dive deeper into applying the full armor of God. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. May God bless you.